Long before there was a DC film universe, Warner Brothers executives dreamed of a Justice League movie. In fact, plans to bring the original Super Friends together for a live-action outing in theaters have been in various stages of development for more than a decade, and the project has taken far more than its share of twists and turns along the way. From a derailed production to problematic facial hair, here's the untold story of Justice League. Summon the League George Miller, who's best known as the mastermind behind the Mad Max franchise, actually planned to film a Justice League movie back in 2007, when it would have beaten Marvel's Avengers to theaters by several years and potentially leveled the MCU-dominated Hollywood playing field. Unfortunately, the project called Justice League Mortal was beset by a slew of problems, including a writer's strike and an ongoing battle over where to film the movie. In the end, the studio pulled the plug on the film and went back to the drawing board, opting to launch their DC Cinematic Universe with 2013's Man of Steel instead. Almost Affleck For a brief window of time, Ben Affleck was a frontrunner to direct the Justice League movie, and we can only imagine how drastically different the movie might have been if he had. Affleck's award-winning films like Gone Baby Gone, The Town, and Argo prove that he's got the ability to write, direct, and star in movies that get raves from critics and audiences alike. And given the bumpy road the DC Extended Universe has faced with critics thus far, it isn't hard to understand why the idea of a Justice League movie with some of Affleck's trademark seriousness and grit might be appealing. But the rumors turned out not to be true. Don't believe everything you hear, son. And that was only the start of the movie's directorial difficulties. Enter Joss Whedon after Man of Steel and Dawn of Justice, Zack Snyder was supposed to direct Justice League as well. But when a personal tragedy forced him to step away from the project, one friend was ready to step in and save the day, Avengers director Joss Whedon. With a little convincing from his buddy Zack, Whedon took the reins and saddled up to handle his third massive superhero ensemble flick within the past five years. And he didn't take the job lightly. Whedon went to town, making so many changes that he earned himself a writer's credit for contributing more than 33% of the screenplay. Over Budget with great rewrites come great responsibility and a bigger budget. Between the studio notes and Whedon's retooled script, Justice League's supersized budget required an extra $25 million for reshoots, not to mention an extra two months on the set for all the actors involved. It just goes to show that Warner Brothers wanted the movie to be the best it could, or at least better than the last one. The Million Dollar Mustache of all the time and money spent on reshoots, a significant percentage went into digitally erasing Henry Cavill's mustache. Cavill was already at work on a new film by the time the studio needed their Superman back. And although producers managed to finagle a blockbuster timesharing deal, the actor had to keep his magnificent cookie duster intact for his role on the next Mission Impossible flick, which left it up to DC's digital wizards to remove it in post-production. Funny on Purpose if you didn't love the dark tone of DC's previous movies, take heart. Justice League is reportedly amping up the comedy after Batman vs. Superman took a critical pounding for being too serious. As Zack Snyder put it, Because of what fans have said and how the movie was received by some, we have put the screws to what we thought the tone would be. Evidence of the change was already visible in the Justice League trailers, which suggests that this is one superhero movie that's not afraid to poke fun at itself. What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. April Fools. After the release of Dawn of Justice, Warner Brothers started gearing up for pre-production on Justice League in April 2016, only to have director Zack Snyder abruptly exit the film entirely after throwing an epic public temper tantrum. The twist? It was all an April Fool's Day gag, albeit one that's less funny in hindsight since Snyder actually did depart the film a year later after the tragic death of his daughter. There could be only one. When Warner Brothers initially unveiled its massive slate of DC movies, there were two Justice League projects on the docket, one slated for 2017, with a sequel to come two years later. But after a tumultuous year for the DC Extended Universe, the studio changed its approach to take things one film at a time. Will we still end up getting a Justice League sequel? Probably, but it'll happen the old-fashioned way, with an announcement issued after the studio counts its cash. The End of Batfleck? Although he's denied it repeatedly, rumors continue to swirl that Ben Affleck is planning to hang up his bat suit. It's not hard to see why he might want out of the DC Universe. His first outing as Batman took a critical drubbing. Justice League had a lot of hiccups on its way to the theaters, and the solo Batman movie that he was originally supposed to write, star in, and direct still doesn't have a release date on the books. Will Affleck pull off a Batman-style disappearing act in real life, creeping into the shadows never to be seen again by the execs at WB? Oh wow, they just… they really just vanish. Huh? Oh. That's rude. For now, he claims he's happy to play the Cape Crusader. We'll see how long that lasts. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.